Hello, and welcome to a special guest edition of Cracking the Cryptic. My name is Tom Collier, and I'm one of the UK's fastest Sudoku solvers. I'm the reigning Time Sudoku champion, and I've had the honour of representing the UK at the World Sudoku Championships for many years, alongside solvers such as Simon Anthony and Mark Goodliffe. Today I thought we'd take a look at a puzzle by Thomas Snyder of Grandmaster Puzzles. Grandmaster Puzzles is a website where you'll find lots of brilliant puzzles written by lots of brilliant puzzle authors. Um, Thomas Snyder is someone that you may well have heard Simon talk about in numerous videos uh, when discussing his, uh, sol uh, his solving notation. Um, but today we're going to uh, take a look at one of the puzzles that he's uh, put together. Um, and yep, so you can see it there on screen. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, solve it, show you where I'm looking, um, and discuss um, hopefully some useful tips as we go along. So I've uh, managed to find some software which will allow, allow me to solve this as we go along. Um, unfortunately, the Grandmaster Puzzles only has PDF versions of the files, which is great if you want to print out, and they'll look brilliant, but uh, for the purposes of a YouTube video, uh, not so great. So, here we go. Um, right, so, uh, where to get started? Um, so, there are two main ways to get start started when you're solving um, Sudoku. Uh, the first is to look at the number uh, and see where that number can go in the row, column, or 3x3 three three box. Uh, and the other way is to kind of reverse that logic um, and instead look at um, a row, column, 3x3 three three box, uh, and look at the cells where there are limited possibilities for that cell. So. Um, typically, it's 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 easier to get started with uh, with the, the numbers. So the first the first of the methods, um, and this this relates to uh, videos um, Simon uh, has gone through before uh, with this Snyder notation, where um, you look to place numbers or place pencil marks if a number can go in any one. Of two places within a three by three box. Um, I'm going to be solving this puzzle in a slightly different way. Um, I'm going to be looking to minimize the notation um, and then uh, yeah we'll see we'll see how far we get get with this. Um, so a good place um, when you're scanning through numbers is to take um, take rows in groups of three or columns in group of three um, and see if there's anything obvious that we can place. Uh, and one way of looking at that is when, within the groups of three, see where we can see multiple num numbers and whether we can place anything. So for example, on the top row, we can see a six and a six, meaning we need a six and a six here, which is something that Simon would notate, but I'm going to uh, hold off on just for now. Um, and uh, we can also see a seven and a seven we can go here or here, but with this crossing seven here, it means that we can place a seven nicely like that. Um, and typically when we place a number, um, it's worth having a quick check to see if there's, there's, there's anything else um, we can place. Um, so looking along the row, there, there are five, five numbers to place. One, two, three, four, nine. Um, can't really see anything there for now, although we can kind of see three and four ruled out. So we have one, two, and nine as possibilities there. Um, but again, gonna gonna hold off on that uh, for now. Uh, we're going to try and be a little bit picky um, about our notation. Um, perhaps uh, where I can see something where I think would be useful is uh, the fours. So we can kind of see the fours in this box cutting off this bit and also this bit. Uh, and so we can place pencil marks for four like that. 
Now, the reason I'm placing this is because those fours are limited to um, a single column. So they are ruling out the rest of this column here. Um, so I think this is quite useful uh, because looking at this four here, this four here means we're limited to a four here or here, and we can place something easily here. Uh, right, let's try that again. Here, uh, looking across to the left, because we've got the four here, we can come across, place one here. Um, again, looking up now, you can kind of see that's ruled out, that's ruled out, so we can place another four here. Um, we can go right now, because we've sort of got the four and the four there. We can go here for the four, and it looks like we're going to be able to finish off the fours because if we look up now, all that's ruled out is fours crossing, so we can place a four here, and finally the four here, so let's just get rid of that pencil mark. Very good, so we've placed um, all the fours, um, so that's um, a good, good start I'd say. Um, Let's just uh, see if there's uh, anything. I mean, I mean, placed with everything there. I mean, I'd be tempted to go looking for, um, looking instead of at numbers at, uh, at columns or boxes where there's a lot filled in. Um, we did previously look at this this second row here, uh, but perhaps didn't really see anything worth anything obvious there for now so let's let's leave that perhaps let's 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 look at some of the the other numbers um, so if we look at uh, again the rows this second group um, can we see repeated numbers no not particularly um, and this third lot where we've got a couple of threes there so threes can go here and here again that might be something that Simon will notate because the threes can go in exactly one or two places but I'm going to try and minimise the notation um, as much as possible. Um, so what else can we do? Uh, so we can look at perhaps the columns now in groups of three. Uh, we can see that there's repeated eights here. So coming down, yes, so we've got possibilities of the eight here or here in the box. Uh, we can't go there, so we can have an eight there. There, so that's that's very useful. Now, um, what my eye is immediately drawn to is this box is beginning to fill up, so we can just have a look and see if anything catches the eye. I kind of notice the one coming down here, also the one coming across here, um, so we can quickly place a nice one there. Um, and again, having placed something, it's always really good just to check if you can place something else immediately and looking to our left, this middle box ruled out here and here, so in goes the one there. Good, good, good. Um, anything else we can place? Um, so I'm not seeing anything particular. We can kind of got the six here and here, which again, we might notate, and the five here and there, which we might notate, but because we've kind of got the two fives and the two sixes there, um, I find that pencil mark a little bit distracting and prefer to um, save um, pencil marks for something slightly more, um, slightly less obvious to see, if you like. Um, so one thing which, uh, again, I can kind of have a, have a quick look at, is uh, this box here. So we've now got the threes. So we can't have threes there or there, but we can have there or there. And again, because it, because the two places it can go um, are pointing in the same same column, it means we can kind of rule out the three there, um, which is interesting actually, because um, we'd already had a look at uh, this row here, and we kind of seen that the threes Threes can't go here or here, or, and now they can't go there. Um, so it allows us to place place a three here. Now this is perhaps something that might have been spotted by by some pencil marks. So I mean Simon might have put three, oh, oh, might have put 
three and three like that, and then three and three like that, uh, and it perhaps makes it a, a little clearer um, that we can place the three here. I mean, the way that I'm looking at it is in the row, the threes are all out here, we're all out here, we're all out here, so it has to go, has to go there. Um, and I think I'm going to get rid of those those threes there because um, I think with the three and the three there are sort of fairly fairly clear. Um, and again with the three and three there, that's that sort of a fairly obvious placement. Uh, right then, right then, right then, right then. Um, so, uh, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were checking, um, we were checking the columns, weren't we? So we we, we got the eight like that. Um, is there anything else we can do there? So I mean, I guess if we look at the left hand side, we have twos here or here, um, and the threes there or there. But I'm not not going to notate them. Um, perhaps something that. I might notate again, it's looking at that one here. Um, I think that's quite useful to mark that, that one there, because again, we've sort of got the uh, the one pointing along here, ruling out lots of stuff here. It's not, I can't see that it's immediately going to help with the placement. Um, but uh, yeah, it may, it may well may well come in useful here, if we're kind of perhaps looking at this column um, a bit later. Oh, right then. Uh, is there anything else we can see? Oh yes, 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 yes. So uh, we placed a three here. Always good to, to think of the last number you place and see where it gets you. But looking down, that's ruled out. That's ruled out. So in goes the three there. Um, and again, looking back up, the three there. The three there. Looking right. Place on the right. Anything else? No, not particularly. Um, right. So where are we at? Um, let's see. I mean, I think by now I'd be looking. There's, there's quite a few weak areas here. So, oh yeah, in particular, yeah. So our sixes here um, have ruled out there so I was going to say that that was a nice weak area to be looking at uh, indeed let me place um, six so let me uh, what else can we do with this six now that's coming across there we can kind of see coming down there with the six again we can kind of mark a pair of six here and it's going to point up like this ruling things out um, I might do a little bit of extra notation here because I've seen something, um, but as, as as an intermediate step, we can kind of do do six. Right, let's mark six and six. And another thing we can notice is the six in this box, and allows us to place two sixes there again in the same row this time, but it's going to eliminate anything else along the row. Uh, in particular it's going to eliminate that six. So actually if we place a six here. So put a pencil mark. Um, again this looks like a nice box to be looking at for further deductions. Uh, and what I can see immediately is with the one here. So um, let's get our pencil marks in again. So we've got a one and a one. Ah, no, so this this that's that's very useful because we can combine that with that information and know that we're placing a one here or here. But notice that we placed um, our useful pencil marks here, uh, and we sort of chose that with a little bit of care because it was also giving us some useful information about the uh, the row and what the the ones it was eliminating in the row. Uh, and in fact, what we can do is eliminate this one. So let's just place the one here. Yes, yes it does. Uh, and again, we can follow that up. So we've got one there and one there. So we've got one here or here. But it's this cross-checking one. Let's just put in a one here. 
very good, very good. Right, <laughs> so now I'm looking at um, this row, which is nearly finished. We need a 9 and a 2. Well, 2 goes there because of the 9. And now we can draw, put it in the 2 if we've got the 9. Good, so that's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I might also, perhaps this is a little bit overkill, but I quite like the 9 there. Um, because that's sort of pointing across here. I've got a 9 and a 9 there. Go on, let's uh, let's let's put it in. Put that in. I don't think we necessarily need to put all that in, but um, why not? Uh, where else are we looking for weak areas? We've got a nice weak area here where we're looking for three, five, and six. But we can't see any any deductions there. I mean, three is ruled out of there. The six is ruled out of there, but nothing really going on there. Um, we've got this box here where we're missing a 2, 3, 5 and 8. And yes, we can see with the 2s. Well, not there, there or there. So in fact, it has to go there. Um, can we do anything with the 3s, 5s and the 8s? No, not there. I mean, the 3s all down there, but nothing else. What we might instead look at is this top row now. We need a three, five, and an eight. And well, what do you know? This one, the five and the three, are ruling out the possibilities there. So we must have an eight. Well, looks like quite a good eight to get. So uh, looking down now. So we've ruled out the eight here, the eight here, and then coming across also the eight there. So we can guess a nice eight there. Looking left now, that puts an eight here. Um, and that also lets us to place the one there, following following the Snyder notation. So that's that's a useful thing to pl place if I can get this software going. Uh, and I think we're really really doing well here. So um, lots of different places to look here. I mean, the row we're looking for a seven and a nine. The seven is blocking that, so we can go seven and then nine. Uh, here we're looking for a one, a one or a two. Well, that's got to go one and then two. Uh, following up on the one, we can also go one. Uh, two's not there, so two there. And then nine there. Um, oh, we can also finish off this column with a nine. So again, you see I've jumped jump to this weak box here. It's nearly filled in, so it's just a case of filling all the, in all the other stuff. Or what do we need? Now we need two and five. It's in that order. I see that because the two's elimin eliminating that. Um, what else have we got? So that five, I'm looking across here. Um, again, we sort of have a nice uh, pencil mark we can put in, and that's going to be sort of pointing up, uh, which is very useful. Because looking at this weak box, what do we need? We need a 3, 5, and a 6. Well, that 5 has ruled everything out. Putting the 5 there. Uh, that 6 means we go 6 and then 3. Let's finish off the row. I think we're nearly done here, actually. So that's a 5. Um, that's a 3. That's an 8. Um, looking at this column, we need 5 and 9. So, oh, 9 and then 5. What do we need here? We need a 5 and a 7, so that's a 7. See the 5 there? That's a 5. This column, well, we've got 6s, and then 7 is the other number we need. Well, 7 is there, so that lets us go 6 and 7. And we're getting quite a nice cascade of digits, and we really, um, if we we're speed solving, we'd be able to put in an absolute flurry of digits. Um, quite a satisfying feeling, uh, but I'm just going to sort of go, go go a little slowly just to show you, show you where, where I'm coming from. Um, we need 8 and 9 there, well that 9 gives us 8 and 9, like that. Uh, and then to finish off this row we need a 7, that means that's a 5 to finish off the row. No 
to finish off this row we need six and nine. We're looking at the top nine. That's what we've done there. So we have six and then nine. Uh, and then the rest the rest the rest is really easy now. So I'm just going to put it all in like so. Oh, that's that's very nice. The uh, software has told me that uh, the puzzle is complete. Well, uh, I hope you found that um, that useful. Um, I'm sort of emphasising uh, as as I'm solving along. I mean, I've I've slowed down the solving process um, quite dramatically there. Um, but I think if you want an insight into the way that I'm generally solve. Um, is that I'm trying to minimise um, as much as possible the pencil marks that I make. Um, and so I'm only going to try and write down things that uh, I think are going to be useful. Now, I don't know whether that's by uh, luck or design, sort of the, all of the notation uh, we wrote in just now was uh, useful and relevant and helped us uh, to deduct, deduct things in a clear way. I mean, it doesn't always work out that way, uh, not by a long shot. Um, but I think if you wanted to try a different way than the uh, the normal Snyder methodology that, uh, that Simon and uh, Mark um, use regularly on cracking the cryptic, then uh, yeah, I would uh, I would I'd suggest trying to minimise minimise your notation. Um, it's it's definitely a helpful thing for for speed solving. Uh, minimizing uh, pencil marks because um, the less notation you make is the less extra writing or typing that you're doing. Um, so if you're doing less of something it's going to take you uh, hopefully um, also less time um, when you're solving. So yeah, I've been Tom Collier and I hope you've enjoyed this. <laughs>